Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hashraptor YouTube channel. If you're new around these parts, be sure to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it. Today we are doing a part two, a follow-up, a supplement to one of our biggest videos that we put out, which is how to mine Bitcoin on PC. And actually what we're doing is mining other cryptocurrencies and having that converted to Bitcoin. But that being said, over 100,000 of you, as of the time of recording right now, actually used that video, got up and running, and we've gotten loads of good feedback. That being said, there were some of you that had some problems or you got up and mining and you just had some questions. So we're gonna answer those questions in this video today. It actually runs a little bit long, so we're gonna to try to get to as many of them as possible, but there's so much interest in this subject that we'll probably do some follow-up videos. We'll probably talk about how you mine Ethereum directly and some other things like that. So stay tuned for some follow-up videos, but let's jump into your questions. Here we go. Okay, our first question comes to us from Pankjo Talukader. <laughs> I hope I said that right. I need to know, is it possible to mine when antivirus software is active on my PC or do I need to disable it? Also, I am new to crypto mining. When my computer is mining, can I do normal activities on my computer like watching videos, browsing, and other activities? Let me go ahead and say, I get this question a lot. Yes, you can do other activities. You can game, you can browse the web, but know that both are going to be affected. Your gaming is going to be affected and your mining is going to be affected. It's all performance based. So if you're looking for the best frames per second in that latest shooter, your best turning off your miner. Going ahead and pausing it. Not to mention that the overclocks that you have set up on your graphics card, they're not set up for gaming, they're set up for mining. So it would be best if you just reset everything and did them separately. That being said, I've had my kids come in on some PCs that were mining. They started gaming. I walked in the room, asked them if they turned off the miner. They had not, and they didn't notice the difference. Let's go. <laughs> So I think it depends on what your expectations are. I would generally tell you to do one or the other for best performance. Now, going back to the first part of this question, is it possible to mine with antivirus software that's active on my PC? Absolutely you can. Now, there are a lot of miners. There's a lot of tutorials out there that tell you to turn your antivirus software off. I am not going to tell you to do that. I recommend that you leave your antivirus software on, even if you're building a dedicated mining rig. There are ways within the antivirus software to set exceptions for miners. Now, the trick is your antivirus thinks that mining software is a Trojan. It thinks that it's got some sort of virus-related code based in it. Now, I am not a programmer. I can't tell you which code is good, which code is bad. What I do personally, this is all I can share with you, is I do a bit of investigation within the community because there are a lot of coders within the community and they do interrogate this code. The majority of the mining code is open source, which means that these coders can interrogate it, they can look at it, and they give the community a heads up when something's good or bad. Also, if you're using something like NiceHash, which we covered in this video, they do their own investigation as well. Now, they do have disclaimers that tells you it's your responsibility and at the end of the day, it really is. But if you're willing to take the risk, you can set those exceptions within your antivirus software. Okay, next. Archons asks, how do you avoid taxes when you convert Bitcoin into your bank account? Because I'm pretty sure if you're living in any first world country, the government's going to come knocking for their cut. Absolutely they are. And I think he's joking a bit here. I, I could be wrong, but I think he's joking a bit here with this question. I'm going to answer this again the way I handle things. I pay my taxes. There are a lot of OG crypto miners, not those that are set up as businesses, but individuals who don't pay taxes, who don't think they should be paying taxes. And there's this entire mindset behind that. And I, I respect that. It's just not the way that I personally operate. I do pay my taxes. And if you talk to a professional, which I always recommend, there are certain situations where, at least within the U.S., you can end up in a tax advantaged situation. So at the end of the day, my recommendation, pay your taxes and work with a professional. Okay, next question. Young Pizza. 
He asks, thanks for the tutorial. Just a question, when I opened the miner, it opened LOL miner and not Phoenix. Is it okay? The answer is yes. However, you want to use the miner that performs the best for you. Now, if you're new to mining, one of the best ways to tell this is through the benchmark utility. You could go ahead and optimize your afterburner settings and then run a benchmark on a given algorithm and then see which miner is the best. For example, Phoenix Miner was a very popular miner for quite a long time. Still is. I still love it for Ethereum mining. However, ran into a couple hiccups here and there and I switched over to one of my other favorite miners which is called T-Rex. Now I do want to show you within the NiceHash client software, so the desktop software in Windows, you may decide that you want to switch miners and you may not have that miner installed on the system. And where you find that is if you go to plugins, you will see a list of all of the miners. But if you find one that you want, so for example, one of my favorites is T-Rex. Well, in the NiceHash desktop software, this was not installed by default. So I just selected this plugin and then I come over here and installed it. You hit the install button and then when you're done it's installed and you can actually benchmark against that miner that you've installed. Again, do your own research and make sure you're comfortable with it. If you want to see where it's being downloaded from and some of the comments, this is the open source link right here. You can click on that and go do a little bit of research. All right, up next is Zolops MC. He says, I have a question. Can you mine something else besides Bitcoin because I want to mine Dogecoin or Ethereum? And the answer is yes, absolutely you can. And stay tuned, I will have a number of mining guides coming up to help you. For example, mining Ethereum is going to be one of the first ones that I have. I do talk about this in a lot of my videos, but I'll have a dedicated video for folks just getting started. And as far as other proof of work coins, if you come out to Coin Market Cap, now on Coin Market Cap, I can set up filters using this filter button right here. And this is just one way to get an idea of what's available. But if I hit this mineable button, that's going to show me coins that are mineable. And there's going to be different criteria for each coin. You may or may not have the PC specifications or the right hardware to mine all these different coins. So this is going to range from, for example, ASICs on Bitcoin to GPU mining on Ethereum to CPU mining on Monero. So this is a good jumping off point. And what I recommend is if there's a coin that you are interested in, so let's say it's Monero, if you click on that, you can start learning a little bit more about the coin itself. And they'll have a lot of information that you can jump to in here. So you can go to the website, you can read the white paper, but usually the website is a good way to see their guides on how to get up and running mining. Now this next one I've gotten several times over the past couple of years. This is from Explicit Neen. <laughs> Explicit Neen. Do I need to be above 18 to do this? And he's talking about mining. I have not seen any laws, at least in the United States, that say that you can't. But definitely do your own research. And I'd say most importantly, if you are under 18, just keep in touch with your parents. Let them know what you're doing. You're not doing anything illegal. Mining is not illegal. You're allowed in the United States to go and work when you're 16 years old at Chick-fil-A or McDonald's or other places. So I don't know why it would be legal. But bottom line, just keep in touch with your parents. Make sure they understand that what you're doing. Some of the accounts that are going to have to be set up are financial accounts anyway to get currency to USD if you want to go that route. So go ahead, keep them in the loop. It's not, it's not, it's not going to be that painful. Okay, Raymond Ramirez says, do you need to be hardwired to your internet modem or can you still run on Wi-Fi? You absolutely can run on Wi-Fi. It's just better to be hardwired, to run via cable connection, Ethernet. If you can, you're going to have a more stable rig, more reliable. But that being said, I've tossed rigs up in hallways in different rooms of the house. I've put them up temporarily in the mining shed out back on Wi-Fi, and I have not had any significant problems. Now there's some things that you can do to test. You'll know generally where you have good Wi-Fi coverage. So you want to check the signal. That's the first thing. Make sure you have good signal. And then the second thing that you can do is check the latency on your connection. And what that means is how quickly, not how fast, not the total bandwidth, but how quick your machine can connect to resources out on the web. And a simple way to do that is if you go down to the search bar within Windows and you type CMD for command this is your command prompt you'll see right here and if you just type ping and I know this IP address from Google because it's easy to remember it's 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8. and if you ping that 
this will give you an idea of how quick your connection is, how readily available it is to quickly connect to resources on the internet. Now again we are connecting to Google here but you'll notice that we had 0% packet loss. This is what you want to be looking at. We sent four packets, we received four. And we did it pretty quickly here, and this machine is on Wi-Fi. So it was 17 milliseconds, a maximum of 23 milliseconds, an average of 19 milliseconds. When you are connecting to a pool to mine to on the internet, I would say sub 100 milliseconds is the best way to do that. So even if you're on Wi-Fi, go ahead and check your ping rate, go ahead and ping Google. And if I go to Google and I type nice hash stratum, you can see this stratum generator from nicehash.com. I click on that. I select my country. So for me, it's US. And I can select the algorithm that I'm wanting to mine on. And for me, it's Dagger Hashimoto, which is Ethereum or Ethash. So I'm going to select that. And if I generate address, there's a lot of more advanced things that you can do with this stratum right here. But for our demonstration, for our testing we are just going to select dagger hashimoto.usa.nicehash.com and I'm going to right click and copy that and we're going to come back over to our command prompt and in our ping section here I'm going to paste and I'm just making sure it says ping space dagger hashimoto.usa.nicehash.com so instead of pinging Google I'm pinging the pool that I'm going to mine to and just make sure that the latency is low we want this average to be low Okay, and you can see right here, so it's done what's called DNS, Domain Name Services. It's taken this name, it's converted it to an IP address, and I can see that I sent four packets, I received four packets, and then my average round trip time was 18 milliseconds. So that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Anytime you get the 50 or above, maybe even 100 or above, there's an issue with communications from your PC, whether it's from Wi-Fi or whether it's your internet service provider or maybe it's the pool itself. Maybe there's everything's fine. It's just in a different country. It's not geographically located well. And then you may want to consider picking a different pool. All right, let's see if we can get to a few more here. If the price goes up, does that affect how much you can mine a day? It does not affect how much you can mine a day. Let me show you. If you Google Ethereum network hash rate. You're going to get a couple options. One here is from two miners. So if you can see this goes back in time for years going back all the way January 2016 and you can see this spike. So imagine your hash rate on your PC. The more people that start hashing on more PCs the higher this is going to go. This in effect shows the total number of miners and how much hash rate they are contributing to the Ethereum network. Now, what does correlate sometimes and binds the network hash rate to the price is that when it's not as profitable, people stop mining it. So you can see as the Ethereum price went down in 2018 and 2019, look at this, miners started falling off and you were able to mine more Ethereum. All right, I know we're running long, but I want to answer a couple more real quick. Hi, when I go to NiceHash, all I see is exchange and not the mining section. Did I do something wrong? No, you did not. No, you did not. This changed in the interface over time from when this video was first created. And I get this question a ton. So I'm so sorry you guys are having this issue. It is in the settings if you don't have a mining tab. So we are at the dashboard. This is the web interface dashboard for NiceHash, not on the client side, not on the PC side. And if I come up and select my settings, on the left side of the screen, you're going to see some different options here. You want to go to account settings, and this is where you'll be able to set a few criteria for yourself. One of them is which tabs show up. So you can see right here, cryptocurrency mining. You want to make sure that this radio button is selected right here. And once you do that, you will have the mining tab. All right, a few more real quick. Chaz says, so I have a data limit on my internet and average about 150 megabits per second. Does internet matter for mining? Thanks in advance. Sorry if you've covered this before. So no, it really doesn't. Now there are a few, not many, there are a couple of mining algorithms that do take a lot of data. The majority of them do not use a lot of data. So that really what you need to focus on is not so much the amount of data or even the total top end bandwidth, but the latency that we talked about earlier. How do I connect NiceHash to Coinbase? So it's real simple. Within the web interface, you have these tabs across the top. You select wallets. And within here, you have the option to deposit or withdraw. If you hit the withdrawal button, 
you can see that I've got my Bitcoin wallet and then I also have a section here that says withdraw to. Now I already have some things set up in here like my Coinomi wallet and if I hit this drop down I also have my Coinbase wallet but I've already set those up. Now if you want to set up new addresses or new accounts just scroll down and you can add them from inside here. Add a new withdrawal address. So let's say you were going to withdraw to Coinomi. All you have to do within your Coinomi wallet, once you've added a coin, is select that coin and you're going to get some options along the bottom here to receive. You can see what your balance is for that coin or you can send. So you're going to receive since NiceHash would be sending to you and you're receiving it in your Coinomi wallet. This is just as an example. It's going to give you this address up here or an address. Yours is going to be unique for you. You're going to copy that, select this button, which is a share button. You're going to copy this address and you are going to paste it inside of NiceHash in the web interface here in the new withdrawal address. It's just that simple. Now Coinbase, it uses an account email address, which makes things a little bit simpler for them to transfer funds. You don't have to enter an actual wallet address, but for just about everything else, you're going to be setting up wallet addresses. Okay, folks, that is it for today. I would like to continue going. I will continue going. I will put out some more guides, some more tutorials, but this video is already running really, really long, but I wanted to get some of these answers out to the more common questions that you guys are having. Thank you so much for the great feedback that you've given me on this video. If you did like it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and if you really liked it, it's greatly appreciated if you hit that applaud button. It goes directly to supporting the channel so we can make more content like this. We will see you in the next video, Raptors. Take care. Bye-bye. Hell yeah.